Get free tech advice for your business from O2 Gurus. Search O2 Business for more. Hey guys, welcome to BTEC. Basil here with a Sony Xperia Z5 Compact, a Z3 Compact, and an iPhone 6 Plus, comparing the screens of all of the devices. Now, the reason for this, and the reason I've got this chart up is because I'm gonna be comparing things like saturation, viewing angles, depth of black, um, and this chart lets me do just that. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is depth of black. Now, the Sony Xperia Z3 Compact has the weakest depth of black without a shadow of a doubt. If I bring that closer, you can see, especially off angle, it kind of has some light coming from the black, it doesn't look completely black. Might not translate to camera, but that's exactly how it looks in real life. Really glad to say that the Sony Xperia Z5 Compact has a much, much greater depth um, in there and it really does look like a very very good panel. Um, I've got it set to full brightness so head on it's probably going to blow the camera out and it'll probably look washed out. I can tell you that this side on experience is actually much more representative. Really nice deep blacks with really decent saturation. The reason I have it on full brightness is so that all of the devices have an equal shot. Um, I'm also indoors so that's why I can't swap out the camera settings um, to compensate. So you're going to have to just go with what I say here to a degree. But you you can definitely see um, that the iPhone also has really nice deep blacks as well. Head on, it blows the camera out too. Side on, it gives you some really, really nice uh, deep blacks and good saturation levels. So depth of blacks, definitely the best on the iPhone and the Xperia Z5. Um, the most kind of color or most light, sorry, coming from the blacks in the Xperia Z3 Compact. Now, if we take a look at saturation, I'm gonna just start with reds because reds are quite a tricky one. The iPhone definitely doesn't get the red here. Uh, the red kind of looks a little bit like an orange. It's just a little bit muted, a little bit toned down. In contrast, the Xperia Z3 Compact has a really vibrant, deep red. Um, it looks almost like a kind of red winey burgundy. It's really, really strong. Um, I really like that red, but so too does the Z compact. This suggests that the screen tech, um, for whatever reason, is able to capture the saturation levels that we really liked in the Z3 compact, pair that with those uh, kind of richer blacks, deeper blacks um, that you find in the iPhone. So it looks like so far we are getting the best of both worlds. Anyone who had a Z3 Compact knows that the white balance was kind of veered towards the blue side, like whites looked a little bit bluer and that wasn't necessarily a bad thing. I personally prefer cooler whites, um, but the Z3 Compact took it even cooler than the iPhone, which has historically been a pretty cool phone um, as far as whites go. Now the Z5 Compact is actually a lot more similar to the iPhone. So not quite as cool as the Z3 Compact. More to the point, across viewing angles, it retains color integrity really nicely. Um, ultimately, that leads me to believe that while they have the same resolution, the Z3 Compact is a superior panel, um, sorry, Z5 Compact is a superior panel across the board, which is ace. Um, Next up, it's gonna be down to what I see in terms of um, the levels at which you can start to make out contrast from 1% black to 2% black. And you can see it from one to two. I'll bring that closer in and maybe you'll be able to on screen. It's between those two bars. So um, you get a pretty decent uh, kind of depth in there. It's pretty impressive that you can still get that depth, but at the same time, make out such slight tonal variations. In the um, Z, three compact as opposed to the Z5 compact, it's similar. Um, you can make it out at 1%, but it's less impressive just because the blacks aren't quite as deep. They look like they are emitting more light. Um, if I was to bring the iPhone into frame, um, it's harder to make out between one to two percent and it's easier to make out between two to three percent. You can just make it out between one to two. Um, ultimately, that just suggests that they're almost identical in terms of the contrast levels between uh, the lower end blacks. But as far as overall findings from this quick test goes, you definitely safe to say that the Sony Xperia Z3 Compact has the least kind of deep blacks, um, whereas the iPhone and the um, Z5 Compact have the richest blacks and also the purest whites as well. As far as brightness goes, um, I can do a really simple test, point them at the camera. How much it's blowing the camera off is gonna dictate how bright the phones are. So that's the Xperia Z3 Compact. From my eyes, the Z3 Compact is the least bright of all of them. Um, and that sh looks like it's blowing the camera off more. So the Z5 Compact is more bright and I'd say the iPhone was 
on par or thereabouts with the Z5 Compact can bring both of those into frame and you can tell me which one is blowing the camera off but I'd say it was a pretty even Stevens result and now bring the Z5 Compact in, Z3 Compact and yeah the Z3 Compact looks that little bit less bright. So hopefully you've enjoyed the quick screen comparison between these three flagship spec devices. They really are three of the best devices out there um, and I'm really stoked that the Xperia Z5 Compact improves on that screen experience. Um, hopefully it'll come out soon, hopefully we'll get a review in it and we'll be able to do things in a little bit more detail. If you've got any questions, anything you want us to test out on it though, make sure you fire them in the comments section below. Also, if you're watching this uh, the week of the 9th of September or thereabouts, um, follow us on Instagram, you'll be automatically entered in to win a Vodafone Smart Ultra 6, the best value for money smartphone around here in the UK. Best of all though, it is an international competition and the phone does support international LTE bands. Thanks for watching. Be micro SD and a micro SIM slot. So this is going to be expandable by 200 gigabytes, which is mightily impressive. 32 gig onboard memory, 3.5 mil headphone jack. This is going to also be compatible with a set of headphones that Sony is going to be releasing, which allows for both digital noise cancellation and high resolution audio all at the same time. Around the back, it's a new camera sensor, 23 megapixels. And what's really awesome about this is that it combines a new focus system with a range of other things to make it a